Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the uh, next installment of this inter, uh, seminar, uh, the Interdisciplinary Science Seminar of our University, of course, of University of Science and Technology. And we have an honor and pleasure uh, to host today Professor Masami Okamoto, uh, who comes from Toyota Technological Institute in Nagoya. Professor Okamoto is an outstanding chemist, so we thank our chemists that uh, they arranged for such a wonderful visit. Uh, again, the, the seminar, uh, as you know, it's, it's fairly new seminar at our institute. An idea comes to Professor Trochimchuk, who has just uh, is just here. So again, an idea is that we host here uh, eminent and influential people from the fields of both science and technology to talk about things that are very important or very uh, currently important uh, for in those fields and for directions that are maybe uh, important for the future and generally uh, on things connected to science and technology and engineering uh, like today. Now our guest today, Professor Okamoto, uh, has worked for 20 years on, on, on polymeric nanocomposites and more specifically the, the research interests still shortly are polymeric nanocomposites, biopolymer related materials for tissue engineering, DNA and RNA chemistry, and hydrogels. Now, um, he received a PhD in 1994 from Tokyo Institute of Technology, then spent, did a number of visits in different countries on different continents, but the postdoc was at National Institute for, of Advanced Industrial Science and Technology at Kyushu. And then he moved uh, to his current post, at, which means Toyota Technological Institute in Nagoya, where he's an, a professor. And now he uh, is laureate on of many prestigious awards and his work has been cited over 15,000 times with Hirsch Factor of 44. Uh, he is on advisor and editorial boards of various uh, journals and in different uh, societies. And today he, he, he's at, uh, ho being a guest at our university, he is giving some lectures on chemistry. I think it started yesterday. Uh, and now for us as a more general audience, he prepared uh, a rather different talk uh, entitled A Fecund Imagination, which if, if you are not probably aware of all those details, but we have tried to translate this into Polish for a long time. Yeah, yeah. And this is the best we came up with. It's called Urodzajna Wyobraźnia. So this is our best approximation to your title. Yeah, thank you. I <laughs> hope we understood what you mean. So our guess is that you will speak on creativity in the context of science. Yeah. Uh, Professor Okamoto, we are re really happy to host you, and please, the floor is yours. Okay. You're welcome. Yeah. Thank you, Tian. <coughs> Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, my name is uh, Masami uh, Okamoto. Okay. Uh, today, I am going to talk about the uh, affected imagination. This means a uh, uh, creativity rich imagination. This imagination is uh, necessary to conduct the uh, original uh, scientific research for academia people. Okay, then I just talk about this. Then this is the first time uh, for me to talk about uh, this kind of uh, general topics. Usually I am going to talk about uh, my uh, special topics. It is easy to uh, talk, but uh, uh, today uh, it is difficult for me to talk about for audience. Okay, let's start. Then, first of all, uh, the introduction myself. Okay, uh, this is my photo. Okay, then my name is Okamoto. Is it correct? <laughs> okay. Then I'm from Japan. Is this okay? Then, uh, do you know this? Uh, do you know Japan? Have you been to Japan? Okay, probably no. Okay. Then this is a, a national flag of Japan, okay? Uh, white color and uh, red uh, sack. Then, uh, as you know, uh, you have uh, same kind of uh, flag, but a different shape. You have a rectangular shape of both two colors, okay? The almost same uh, situation. Then uh, next year, we will uh, fight in football game in the World Cup. Japan and Poland, okay? Probably uh, your country is uh, much stronger than our country, okay? <laughs> Probably, okay. 
but uh, we will uh, do best, <laughs> okay? So uh, this is a map of Japan, okay? Then this is a capital, Tokyo is here. Then I, uh, our institute, Toyota Technological Institute is uh, location is uh, Nagoya. Nagoya is here. Then Tokyo to Nagoya, it's around uh, 400 kilometers, okay? Uh, from here to Warsaw, uh, 300, 200 or 300. Then from uh, Tokyo to Nagoya, uh, more than 300, 400 kilometers. But uh, we have a very rapid uh, train, name is a uh, Shinkansen, uh, Super uh, Rapid Express. Uh, by using this, uh, it's around uh, one and a half hour. Very short, uh, very short time, very quick, okay. But anyway, Japan is a very small island, but uh, uh, our uh, research activity uh, will high, uh, going up day by day, okay. So uh, this slide shows the uh, uh, Japanese uh, four season. Probably uh, here in Poland, you have the uh, same uh, four season, okay? No? Then uh, this is spring, is it okay? Then this is summer, then autumn, then winter. Winter, we have also uh, snow, and especially the north part of Japan, we have a lot of snow. But uh, in the spring, uh, probably uh, next April is the beginning of the spring in Japan. We have uh, many, many cherry blossom around the uh, city. Then in summer, we have uh, uh, fireworks, okay, something like this. And then in autumn, we have uh, this kind of uh, uh, colored uh, trees, okay. Very beautiful uh, scenery we have. Then uh, this is the winter. Season. Okay, probably same uh, situation in here in Poland. Okay. Then today's topics is a uh, creative rich imagination. Uh, I have no uh, way to translate the uh, Polish language. Then uh, this uh, pronunciation and this uh, trans translation uh, probably done by uh, this committee. Okay, thank you all very much, okay. Then, uh, first of all, then I would like to show the uh, Einstein, okay. Then, uh, as you know, he is very famous uh, person, then he, he is a Nobel Prize uh, winner in 1921, okay. Then he said, imagination is more important than knowledge, okay, and this is, uh, almost acceptable, okay? Then knowledge is limited. This is also acceptable. Then imagination encircles the world, okay? These uh, three uh, words is very, very important to do the research, of course, but I think the more important is the uh, creativity rich imagination, okay? Because the I'm also an uh, academia person, then you are uh, almost all you are a student, but uh, uh, we need to uh, uh, work the uh, science and day by day. Then to do this, then imagination is uh, imperative. Then imagination is necessary. Uh, uh, especially uh, creativity, rich imagination is imperative, okay. Then uh, I focus, today I focus on the uh, creativity, rich the imagination, okay. Then uh, this slide shows the uh, subject object uh, principle, okay. This is a little bit uh, complicated for me, but uh, uh, this principle uh, was developed by this uh, one uh, guy. Uh, his name is Kitaro Nishida. Uh, he strongly focused on the uh, uh, philosophy in his life. He uh, was a graduate in uh, Kyoto University. Okay. Then according to his principle, then uh, subject is ourselves. Okay, then object 
uh, hold example, the apple, okay. Then, uh, first of all, we recognize the apple, okay. Then uh, that means that uh, we can easily to recognize the apple. But the uh, important thing, the before separation of subject and object, that means that before recognize of this apple, we need to feel something, okay? That is important. Then uh, Professor uh, Nishida says that is pure experience, okay? And that means that, aha, there it is, okay? Then we know this uh, is apple well known. That means that we have a lot of uh, information. We have a lot of a lot of subject about uh, this. Then uh, suddenly uh, we can easy to recognize that this is Apple, but uh, uh, before recognizing, uh, before recognize, uh, we feel something to uh, look uh, this Apple. That is important, okay? Then uh, Professor Kitaro, uh, Nishida said that is subject object uh, principle. Okay. Then uh, usually we use uh, uh, intuition, okay, intuition kind of imagination. Then uh, we uh, uh, every time we focus on the research, then we uh, encounter some problem. Uh, in our research, then uh, we use uh, institution, okay? This is a uh, Polish language, okay? But uh, this institution, it comes <coughs> from the experience of choice, which is originally by uh, reason, okay? Then this intuition uh, based on the information, because we have a lot of uh, information about uh, the something, then finally, this intuition is as a select of a shortcut. That means the shortcut means that we have a, a many, many way to solve the uh, problem on the research. But uh, finally, uh, we select uh, this uh, shortcut by using uh, intuition, okay. Then uh, this intuition is sometimes uh, important to uh, push our research, our original research, but uh, sometimes it's not so good because by using this intuition, okay, uh, we cannot uh, expect the uh, unexpected uh, result. That means a normal, uh, very common, uh, normal result, okay. So, uh, this is uh, very, very uh, important uh, things to do original uh, research, okay? Then, uh, finally, we have a uh, very common paper, including a uh, pe pedestrian uh, content, okay? And this is a Polish language, you can understand here, yeah? okay? So, uh, when we do some research, and then we uh, focus on the some uh, problem or issue, then we use uh, uh, this uh, intuition. Then finally, uh, we, we can get uh, this kind of uh, result, then publish a paper, but uh, those kind of paper probably uh, very uh, pedestrian uh, content included, okay. So then uh, how to uh, make the original, original uh, research, okay. Then uh, every time I, I am fighting uh, with this uh, situation, okay. Then I'm very happy to publish uh, many, many paper uh, during my uh, research career. But uh, uh, every time I, uh, I am 
uh, fighting uh, about this uh, subject. Okay. Then uh, to do this, then uh, one important thing I think is uh, throw out all the knowledge. Then that I is lead to have uh, creativity. Okay. The second one is that there is no uh, creativity rich research unless it uh, extends beyond the uh, scope of conventional research. Okay. Then third one, we can rebuild the research uh, framework. Okay. The research framework means that uh, you are the student, then probably you will uh, do uh, some uh, PhD uh, study. Then uh, you focus on only uh, that uh, subject. Then you cannot see the uh, around, uh, uh, you cannot see the uh, environment of the, uh, your research. Then that is a problem. Then you can uh, rebuild the research framework. Okay, this is very important to do uh, original research work. Okay, then uh, this is a one example of my case. Okay, I uh, I am focusing on the composite material. Okay, then this is a one example. Then uh, very old composite case. Then this is uh, Italy, okay? Then Matera is here. The Matera is a UNESCO World Heritage Site, okay? Then when I visit to this uh, Matera, then I have found uh, this kind of uh, composite. Then composite uh, consisting of the conduit, okay? Pipe supported by uh, bone, especially cow bone, okay? And this is a kind of uh, composite, but a very, very uh, classical uh, composite, okay? This is a, a kind of composite, okay? Then now, uh, our laboratory the focus on the uh, nanostructured uh, material-based composite. This is very uh, modern composite as compared with the uh, previous one, this one. Then we use uh, uh, various kind of uh, inorganic material, uh, something like this. For example, uh, carbon nanotube and carbon based uh, this kind of ball, and also layered material. And these are natural uh, material. The shape is uh, uh, spherical, and uh, sometimes shape is uh, tubular structure. By using this, uh, we can make a very modern uh, composite. This is a one result, uh, polymer-based nanocomposite. The matrix is uh, based on the polymer, okay? Then uh, nano-structured uh, material uh, disperses in the polymeric uh, material, uh, something like this, okay? White part is an uh, inorganic material then uh, gray area is a polymeric material, okay? Then this material is very uh, useful uh, for uh, engine cover and uh, automotive parts, okay? We have uh, uh, many success to using uh, this uh, type of uh, nanocomposite uh, in the application of uh, automotive part, okay? This is a very uh, modern uh, composite case. Then now we uh, focus on the another subject. Uh, that subject is uh, a little bit different research area as uh, in comparison of uh, composite research field. Okay. Then first one is a uh, clay-based nanoball uh, conjugated with uh, uh, anti-cancer drugs. And then in application for the cancer therapy, okay. Then we have a uh, inorganic material, very, very tiny uh, material, nano size, combined with uh, this kind of uh, anti-cancer drug. This is also a kind of composite, okay. 
And second one is uh, uh, recently we focus on the bio component. And this is a uh, uh, not biopolymer composite. Bio composite means a uh, uh, material uh, and uh, tissue. Okay, this is a new area of composite. Then uh, we wish to uh, break through of uh, conventional composite uh, framework by using uh, this uh, method of uh, tissue engineering and material science. Okay. Then uh, I wish to uh, talk about a little bit about uh, bio-based uh, composite, okay? Uh, we use the, uh, the natural rubber latex, you know, the uh, rubber uh, is, is well-known material. Industrial uh, part, for example, a tire and a globe or something and something, okay? Then this is a uh, uh, original particle of the rubber that we call this uh, natural rubber uh, latex. Okay, each size around 300 nanometer, very very tiny uh, particle. Okay, then this particle consists of three layers. Okay, the core part is a, a polymeric material. Okay, then uh, this material has two surfaces. One surface is a lipid. Then a second surface is a protein. Okay, something like this. Okay. Then uh, this is a history of the rubber. Okay. Then probably you know this is a uh, Colombo. Okay. Uh, he is an explorer. Okay. Then he encountered the uh, elastic lamp uh, made by rubber. Okay. In uh, 1492 in Haiti. Then, after that, uh, 200 years, uh, nothing happened. Then one uh, gentleman, his name is Kandame. He is uh, uh, also explorer, and uh, he is well known the material science. Then uh, he also encountered the lava uh, on the way of the uh, Quito, Ecuador. Okay, then. He reported the uh, rubber uh, characteristic to the Academy of uh, Science of France. Okay, and after that, uh, 1751, he uh, presented uh, one paper to the Academy of France. Then, uh, after four years, 1755, uh, his paper was published. Okay. And this is a very long time, almost four years. Okay, but uh, nowadays, this is incredible uh, uh, years. Then when we published the one paper to the, uh, sorry, we subject the one paper to the uh, society, then probably uh, one month ago, uh, one month uh, later, the paper will be appear. Then and this is a very uh, strange situation at that time. Okay. So the uh, rubber history is a, a long, long history, okay? But uh, we would like to uh, show the another case. Then uh, this is uh, Edison, okay? As you know, then he's an uh, inventor, okay? Then uh, last uh, year in his life, he focused on the uh, plant laboratory. He built up his plant laboratory in Fort Myer. Okay, this is a very nice uh, uh, peninsula area. Then, uh, with help of the uh, Ford Motor Company and Firestone. Okay, then uh, by using this laboratory, he focused on the uh, rubber research. Okay, almost. Uh, this is uh, uh, 1927, uh, then he died, 1931, then four years, he strongly focused on the rubber research, okay. Then nowadays, uh, rubber uh, comes from the almost uh, 35,000 uh, plants, okay. 
then uh, Naba has a long, long uh, history in the application of the folk medicine. Okay, folk medicine means a uh, uh, medicine, but uh, uh, people use uh, uh, from long, long time ago. Okay, okay. then uh, only uh, one percent of plant lava has been uh, studied. That means that almost all is unknown. Then we have a very uh, expectable uh, result from uh, this lava uh, potential. Okay. Then uh, probably uh, you don't know, uh, uh, lava comes from the several plant. For example, this is a dandelion. The, uh, we have uh, many, many dandelion in the spring uh, season. Then this is a, uh, you know, this is a ficus. Okay, this is a kind of uh, different kind of plant. And you know, uh, this is a lettuce and uh, this is a cell. And these plant uh, make the lava inside. Okay, and probably uh, every day you, uh, you eat the lava part in your uh, body, okay? <laughs> then nowadays, uh, lava particle is very, very uh, po uh, application, potential application for tissue engineering. Then one example is uh, uh, angiogenesis formation. Angiogenesis means a uh, uh, blood vessel formation, okay? Another case is a uh, occlusive membrane, okay? Uh, this is a uh, one result, okay? Then, as I mentioned before, the folk medicine is uh, also uh, a lab potential application. Then, uh, long, long time ago, people used uh, uh, lab for uh, treatment of acne and diabetes and, and gastric and inflammation. Okay, so lab is uh, uh, some medicine from a long, long uh, time ago, okay. Then now we focus on the uh, bio-based uh, composite, especially uh, cartilage. You know cartilage? Cartilage is the top part of the bone, the bone covered by cartilage, okay. <coughs> the cartilage based biocomposite by using uh, tissue engineering and uh, natural rubber latex material science. Then this part is a uh, uh, natural lava, okay? Then this part also natural lava. This is a result of the uh, cultivated tissue uh, made by our laboratory, uh, okay? This is a uh, biocomposite, okay? Then we uh, evaluate the uh, mechanical property of this uh, material, okay? This is a one result, uh, uh, elastic modulus uh, distribution, the core part and also elastic modulus distribution of the surface part, okay? <coughs> Something like this. This is a kind of composite, okay? Then uh, this is the final part of my uh, presentation. Then uh, difficult problem, that is a challenging uh, issue is uh, very important for young uh, student or young researcher because a uh, challenging issue is uh, uh, difficult to solve so quickly, that is very important, okay? And to do this, then creativity, rich uh, imagination is necessary to do this, okay? Now for example, uh, cell-based uh, uh, research and also uh, beginning of the universe uh, related research is a challenging issue, okay? Then I wish to say, please uh, do these kind of challenging issue in your future. Probably you will uh, meet a, a creative research in your life, okay? Then uh, this is a one a good uh, example. As you know, this is a uh, Copernicus, okay? Astronaut, then uh, he uh, have found a helio Okay, this one, heliocentric, okay. Then uh, finally he leads to the having a revolution, okay. Revolution means uh, uh, rotation 
and also a revolution means a uh, change. Mm, that means a uh, paradigm shift. Okay, so uh, Copernic's uh, spirit is still alive in here uh, in Poland. Okay, so you have a good example from uh, previous history. Probably you can uh, try the uh, challenging issue in your uh, future. Okay. Then finally, uh, I will show you the one uh, great uh, potential uh, person. His name is Conrad. Okay. Uh, he make uh, a Japanese uh, soba noodle. Okay. And this is my house. Then uh, this is our <laughs> Uh, group member, then Conrad is here, I'm here. Okay. He is well known the Japanese uh, research skill and also Japanese culture uh, now. Okay. Uh, if you have uh, some problem, please contact uh, Dr. Conrad. He has a very uh, potential person and a very skillful person. Okay. Then uh, thank you for your attention and thank you very much. Uh, and this is the final uh, slide on my talk. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Okamoto. Thank you for this fascinating lecture. And now I will welcome your questions and comments from the audience. Please. Yes, please. About the paradigm shift that you've said, Professor Okamoto, yep. uh, I was wondering uh, why of all different, um, I have to say it, uh, <laughs> from all different examples that you've said about, you have chosen Copernicus yeah. of all, uh, even though you have mentioned uh, a certain other scientist uh, earlier, that was Albert Einstein uh, and his works, and mostly uh, the mathematic mathemat mathematical system uh, behind the theory of relativity came from uh, another paradigm shift that happened in the 90th century. I believe in it was uh, in about 1854 uh, year uh, on a certain lecture hall in Nottingham in Germany uh, where a very brilliant mathematician, uh, Bernhard Riemann, uh, clashed with the whole uh, scientist world and he he was the first one uh, since uh, the pre uh, since the ancient times to challenge the uh, Euclid's axiom uh, on this uh, very memorable lecture mm -hmm. uh, he proved that uh, it is possible to break out of the uh, axioms of geometry claimed by Euclidus and this uh, uh, he basically proved that it is possible for a three-dimensional space to shift, and that was the foundation uh, that later came uh, into fruition in a form of uh, the theory of relativity formed by Einstein. Uh -huh. And this was just what I was wanted to comment. Oh. <laughs> yeah, uh, thank you for your question. Then it is difficult for me because uh, I am not familiar with uh, mathematics. I, I only focus on the material science. But uh, uh, as you know, the um, uh, paradigm shift is occurred in uh, uh, several uh, kind of uh, research field. Okay. Then I just focus on the, uh, today, I just focus on this. Uh, but uh, uh, probably uh, every time you have uh, such kind of spirit, and then such uh, spirit will be uh, useful uh, to do uh, some uh, breakthrough in your uh, research or in your life, okay? Well, probably, I hope so. Okay, okay thank you for your uh, presentation. And uh, my question is about the interdisciplinary research because you present us that uh, 
uh, first they, you made some composite, right, for the automotive industry. Uh, secondly, you move uh, to the cancer research and then to this uh, biocomposite, which are not based on the artificial polymers. My question is, how can you build such interdisciplinary research gathering scientists from various disciplines? Because I supposed you have a group of uh, researchers well, from various fields. So how you build the bridge of understanding between ah. all of you to uh, connect the each of the person's potential yeah. to make something which is really great and oh challenging uh. in science. Ah, okay, uh, thank you for your question. Then, okay, I understand your question, but uh, uh, I am also a material scientist. Then, uh, for example, uh, interdisciplinary research usually uh, conduct between the material science and the biologists. Okay, this is a very common case. Then that means uh, we need to discuss each other, okay? Then we'll make some result after discussion. And this is one uh, example of research, interdisciplinary research. But uh, uh, this is my opinion. Then I am material scientist, but uh, I need to uh, study the tissue engineering, okay? Bio uh, cell biology related research, then I need to uh, I need to investigate uh, cell biology by myself. Okay, that is more strong uh, person, strong researcher to do such uh, interdisciplinary research. Of course, it is very uh, difficult. Then. Uh, depend on the situation and uh, depend on the uh, circumstance of research and uh, depend on the uh, foundation uh, from the government of the from the university. But the uh, uh, more important thing is uh, uh, passion, passion to do research. Okay, then uh, I have a little bit uh, strong passion in comparison of uh, conventional researcher, then I uh, I study uh, cell biology by myself. Then I need uh, I can combine uh, each research field uh, by myself. Okay, this is a uh, one way. Okay, the important thing is that uh, your passion. <laughs> Please remember. Thank you for your question. <laughs> Thank you. More questions or comments? Please. I, I had one myself. Oh, okay. So I think I can mind for later. Uh, you are from Toyota University uh, uh, Institute. Yes. And tell me, please, what is the proportion between Toyota, which we now from the street, right? And the research area, uh -huh. and the research area which Toyota invests in, in science. Ah, okay. Then, okay. Ah, uh, yes, yes, a good question, okay. Then, I'm working in the uh, Toyota Technological Institute, okay. Then this institute was established by Toyota Motor Company then 30 years ago, a very, very uh, new institute, small uh, university. But uh, our uh, private university is uh, independent from Toyota Motor Company. Okay, then uh, Toyota Motor Company also has a, a research uh, company. The name is Toyota uh, Central Research and Development. Then that uh, company also focus on the tissue engineering. Okay, the bio uh, related uh, subject. Okay, then my research is also independent from the uh, Toyota Motor Company. Okay, because the uh, university is uh, independent from company. Now sometimes we need to uh, collaborate with company uh, 
with uh, help of some uh, budget or some funding. Okay. And that means the uh, uh, purpose of research is uh, accepted each other. Okay. Then we can uh, collaborate with uh, company. The, 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 those two missions of academia that you seem to contrast, one is to accumulate and preserve knowledge yes, yes, yes. so that the, the knowledge built in the past has not they does not die away. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yeah, yeah. creativity, yeah, yeah. inventions, yeah, yeah. and sometimes I understand it's in, in conflict, right? That, that yeah, if yeah. the same person yeah, yeah, yeah. knows too much, yeah. it's no longer so yeah, creative. Yeah, 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 yeah. How, how do you do this? Like some people should be smart and uh, some people should be courageous. <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you for a good question. Okay. Then this is my opinion. Then accumulation is very, very important in the uh, academia. But uh, mm, I think uh, every researcher focus on the accumulation is not so good. The every researcher focus on the uh, interdisciplinary originality rich research is not so good. Probably uh, case by case. Then uh, potential rich uh, researcher uh, should be focused on the creativity uh, rich research. Okay. Then uh, as you know, we are very busy every day to do uh, something to do. Okay. Then uh, we uh, use our time uh, so uh, effectively, okay. Then, uh, if the researcher has a very particular uh, potential to do such kind of originally uh, related research, then such researcher uh, should focus on the uh, interdisciplinary research or uh, breakthrough kind of research. Okay, I think. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, there were uh, announcements of those uh, lectures on research or, or on aspects of chemistry that Professor Kamoto is, is, is an expert on on the internet in our web pages. So I also ad advertise this later in this week. And thanks again for your participation today. Thanks again for Professor Kamoto's lecture.